All right guys, welcome back to the channel. This is gonna be a bit of a different video today. I've gotten lots of requests to start doing like screen share content. Some of this will be like niche research. Some of this will be like product page optimization. Some of it will be Google ad optimization. We might even do like some SEO, uh, like screen share content on here. But this is the first of many to come. And so if you're new to the channel, I recommend you subscribe for daily high ticket dropshipping content in 2025. I'm doing my best to upload a new high ticket dropshipping video every single day, just various topics about the business model, about my own businesses, about tips and tricks about certain areas, all that good stuff, all things high ticket dropshipping. If you're someone that is considering starting a high ticket dropshipping business, I do have my program linked in the description below. As I'm recording this, it is January 16th and the, the current program I filmed in late 2022 and that is what is currently linked in the description below. Uh, if you get it right now, I am currently in the process of creating and releasing the 2.0 version of the course along with my partner, Lisa Whaley, who has 25 years of SEO experience. Um, that'll come out later this month. We're aiming for the 30th. If you get it now, you'll be grandfathered in at no additional cost because it, the price will be going up quite a bit for the new course. So if you get the current course, you get grandfathered into the new course. So for today's video, I thought what might be interesting would be just kind of walking through general niche research. I'm just going to be analyzing one particular niche today and how I came up with this niche and how I come up with pretty much all niches, at least as far as like an initial brainstorming, was ChatGPT. In the new course, I go, this, these, I do all of these steps as far as the ChatGPT prompts that I use, and then how I use SEMrush and SpyFu uh, and general searching around Google to kind of hone in on really good niches. But so this, this will just kind of be a sneak peek of, of what's in the course. But the niche I'm looking at is like, the initial impetus was livestock scales, like cattle scales, cattle weighing scales. And so that that idea initially, again, came from some ChatGPT prompts that I used, among many other ideas that ChatGPT gave me. And so there's no like set order to the process here. I think a good place to start, though, is always in SEMrush, just kind of getting a gauge as far as like what kind of keyword difficulty are you actually up against? Um, and my partner Lisa and I agree on on this piece. It's like, really you should be aiming for a, a keyword difficulty of 15% or lower when you're looking at niches. And it's easier said than found, but there are, it's a big world. There are many products out there and there are thousands of different niches that fit this bill. And even within a specific niche, all we're analyzing here is a particular keyword or a variation of a keyword. So like certain long tail keywords will have way lower keyword difficulty. This is just looking at the general livestock scale. So I'm sure there's like, well, actually we can look at how many variations there are. About 526 keyword variations of this. And as you can see, different variations of it have different keyword difficulties, and all of them are pretty much 15% or below, which is great. That's it, you know, if the initial search is like, you know, upwards of 20%, I think that's still okay. Because what we're taking into account in, you know, when we're looking at this, when we're building a high ticket dropshipping business, when we're really trying to, at the end of the day, the niche is the most important part, no matter how you slice it, no matter how great of an online you know, sales expert you are, the niche is the most important part. And so what we're thinking about when we're thinking of niches and, and the keyword difficulty is both from an organic uh, ranking standpoint with your SEO and then from a PPC uh, paid advertising standpoint. For those of you that have followed the channel for a long time, you know that my, my focus has always been primarily on the PPC side because it, it gives you the ability to get immediate return, immediate revenue. As I've kind of matured as an entrepreneur and matured in e-commerce in general, I have totally changed my tune from, you know, when I first got started towards SEO, because when I first got started, I was a lot younger. I was very impatient. I wanted immediate results and I wasn't willing to put in, you know, beyond just the basics, a lot of, a lot of effort into SEO, but really SEO is the thing to do. It is kind of the, the night and day difference maker between a long-term sticky asset that makes you a lot of money online that you can either hold on to for a long time or you can potentially sell for an, 
an enormous payday. Um, SEO is kind of the difference maker here. Organic free traffic at the end of the day equals no overhead cost for that traffic. So all that said, you know, we're, we're keeping in mind both organic ranking and, and SEO ranking. And right now I'm just under the SEO keyword overview. As far as PPC analysis in SEMrush, it's okay. I tend to like SpyFu a little better and I'll be showing you kind of just a few things that I look at in SpyFu. The reality is, and the unfortunate thing is, there's no perfect tool out there that actually totally accurately captures data. When I say data, I mean like monthly ad budgets, I mean cost per clicks, um, you know, uh, actual competitor analysis. It's hard to come by, but it's still, it's still really valuable to like try and get a gauge of because um, my search, like when I, when I'll show you in SpyFu is like my search for this in there is probably going to have somewhat limited data just because of the, how low of a, a difficulty of a keyword this is, which means there's probably, you know, total volume only less than 10,000. There's not going to be a lot of competition, which means there's not going to be a lot of data to analyze. But if I was analyzing something like sofas, for example, it's like, God, where do you begin? It would, it would give you millions of results. It would give you hundreds of thousands of results, starting with Amazon all the way down to Wayfair and, and all the rest. So that said, all the way down here, it can, it, uh, it'll give you just where, as far as this keyword goes, who's ranking at the top, all the way down to who's ranking at number 100. And as you can see, these are all, uh, the top ones here are, are clearly companies that sell scales. There's You'll, you'll always see Amazon in the mix. You'll always see YouTube in the mix. Um, but I think this is a pretty interesting uh, niche because when I think about like livestock scales, yes, you could make a store totally dedicated to that, like just totally brand it around livestock scales. And you could probably make that work. Where I tend to lean when it comes to high ticket drop shipping is kind of a broader catalog, which gives you a higher ability to pivot if you need to. And this is just learning from my own experience as far as actually like casting a somewhat wider net and discovering what works that way. And so th I want to clarify, I don't mean going so broad where it's like I'm selling, I'll use my, my first store, for example, where I'm selling greenhouses, carports, sheds, fire pits, patio furniture, pergolas, awnings, all sorts of unrelated stuff, except there it's like outdoors. So to me, like that, that's like way too broad of a niche because I don't come off as an authority in any one of those spaces. But in, in this type of situation, uh, I think you can get away with, with a, with the broader like scale niche, like industrial scales. I'm sure there's all sorts of use cases for scales that I'm not even aware of starting in the initial idea here was livestock scales. I'm just going to, I've already got a Google search pulled up here. And these are just some shopping ads on cattle scales. And there are a handful of competitors in here, but it kind of seems to be dominated. The Google ads shop, the Google shopping ads auction is dominated by this Liberty scales. Which I think it's kind of interesting. So I'm just, I'm gonna check out their website. I won't, I won't make them pay for click here just cause I'm a good person but I'll go to Liberty Scales. I'm just curious to see like all of the use cases. Bench scales, industrial scales, livestock and agriculture loads. Okay, so there's like laboratory scales. I, and I'm sure some of these like specific types of scales are gonna be more competitive than others. Some of them will be less competitive than others. Uh, as, as you can see in this, One sec, it's just loading here. Come on. I'll pause real quick while this loads. Never mind, it just pop, it just came up. So I mean, as you can see, like portable livestock scales, there's nothing above 19. And and the the highest keyword difficulty one here it's like almost tied. It's just kind of, a, it's the only difference is this is plural. This one isn't is livestock scales for sale because that's clearly like the highest intent keyword. So as you can see, the intent is purely transactional. 
obviously livestock scales for sale, but still it's less than a 20% keyword difficulty, which is pretty good considering all of these other variations that are, you know, probably also very intentional as far as transaction. Like all, when it has the T next to it, it means transaction. When it comes to SpyFu, and again, all of this is laid out step-by-step step in the course, um, along with like how to actually like find these niches. But when we're analyzing them, this is stuff that I like to walk through. I'll be honest, the results for this particular search in SpyFu, uh, I kind of have to take with a grain of salt, just because again, it's not a high, high volume niche. So there's going to be limited data. And what that means is when you have a smaller sample size, you just have like, you don't have a lot as much to look at. So usually like when I'm looking at niches in SpyFu, what I like to look at is top ad competitors um, and see like in descending order of their overlap, meaning how often their ads are showing up in the same auction, just seeing what what their monthly ad budget looks like, what kind of monthly clicks they're looking like, and then I can kind of compare this to what I'm finding in SEMrush as far as their actual organic traffic and just see like, where am I going to be competing, be competing against these people, against these companies? Is it going to be in the ads? If it's in the ads and I know my budget, you know, it, let's say my budget's 2000 a month. Well, it seems like Cardinal Scale to kind of be, as far as like a budget goes, a big competitor of mine, potentially. That said, I mentioned this at the beginning of the video, the data in any tool, including SpyFu, when it comes to monthly ad budget, you just, you can't rely solely on it. It's a data point, how reliable that data point is. Again, for niches like this, really difficult to say. I, I'll tell you, I've looked at my own like estimations in here before at, on my own businesses. And at the time it wasn't far off, but it wasn't exact. So how far off, what the margin of error is on these, really hard to say. Uh, what I like to look at is ad history because this actually shows me what are their top ad copies when it comes to search ads and how did these particular ads perform so 44 percent of the time this was in the top of the page 75 percent of ads covered two out of three average position so again the if if let's say i'm kind of narrowing down on a few niches or maybe i've kind of chosen my niche and now i'm at the point where I'm really trying to get a sense of how do I actually compete in the space? These are all the types of things that I like to look at. Um, I like to do some Google searches to see who's actually showing up in the ads because I, again, you cannot solely rely on SpyFu or any any tool for that matter. You actually have to like look around, see who's showing up, get a sense of that. Um, and then from there, it's like how big is the catalog and also how many manufacturers are in the space? Will it be really difficult to get wholesale relation? And that's again, where when it's, when it comes time to find suppliers, that's where ChatGPT comes in again. And, and, you know, gives me a list of manufacturers, but I also like to use SEMrush to see who all is ranking for this keyword. And I, and from there, I try to find really young domains, which typically means they're drop shipping businesses, you know, young meaning five years or less um, that have been on the internet. And I look at those websites and I see, okay, this is only a six month old website. They've got a few brands of whatever niche it is. Uh, I'm, that's kind of where I'm going to start as far as like reaching out to those brands, because chances are, if they were able to get a drop shipping relationship with them, I am. So I think I'll, I think I'll end that there again. This was just kind of a sneak peek, a very small snippet of what goes into building a high ticket drop shipping business. This is just analyzing one niche how I go about it, you know, things that I like to pay attention to, whether I've chosen this niche or, or not. I'm just trying to narrow things down. Uh, there's no one set, one size uh, fits all approach to this. Um, this is just kind of what's evolved for me over the years. So hope that's helpful. Again, if you are not subscribed, I'm uploading daily high ticket dropshipping content. And if you are interested in my course, my link's in the description below, along with my supplier acquisition service, my Google ads service. Let me know in the comments what else you guys want to see on the channel. It is much appreciated because when I'm trying to upload 365 videos in a single year, sometimes my brain can run out of ideas for content. So 
We'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for tuning in and take it easy.